Go ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Captain Mark Noble. I just got back in from fishing, but I want to take a quick minute right here and share with you what we've been doing on the water. Look, we've been running down to the beach at Cumberland Island and we're catching lots of speckled trout right now. This is a great time of the year to target speckled trout. Also, flounder, whiting, black drum, red drum, and occasionally we're catching a few Spanish mackerel. But if you want to go offshore, the king mackerel action, well, it's picking up good. I've had some real good reports here lately of the offshore reefs. Plenty of live bait offshore and plenty of king mackerel. Maybe you'll want to do that. But also, for all y'all out there that love the deep sea fish, it looks like we're finally going to get a three-day season coming up here in, in August. The 23rd through the 25th, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be a red snapper season. So we only got three days out of the whole year, so maybe you'll want to go check that out. But what I've been trying to target mostly right here lately is tarpon. This, well, let's just say it's one of my most favorite fish to fish for. It's sought after throughout the world, probably more so than any other large game fish that there is. So tarpon fishing right now is outstanding. And of course, there's always plenty of sharks out there to go chase around as well. The whiting hole also is holding plenty of whiting right now. So if you're looking to surf fish, you know, check out the whiting fishing, but also perhaps some flounder fishing in here around the rocks, especially like Ghoul's Inlet or over on Cumberland on the south end of the island. Maybe you want to check that out. But I'm going to share something with you that I do all the time because I have a couple girls that grew up here on the island. We set crab pots, well, let's say very often because we love to eat blue crabs. And here's just something that, you know, I take a lot of things for granted, and maybe many of y'all do as well, but if you ever went across the St. Simon's Causeway and you looked across the rivers and you've seen all these pots floating in the water, well, we all know they're blue crab pots, but many people don't know they're blue crab pots, but these are commercial pots set by commercial crabbers to harvest blue crab. But did you know this, that recreationally, you can set six pots of them yourselves? Well, that's what I do on a regular basis, and I hope, well, let's y'all just stick around. We're going to go out here and run one of my pots before I go back to the dock today, and, and maybe when you get an opportunity to go out, maybe you'll consider not just blue crabbing like off one of the piers or the bridges with a drop net. Maybe you'll consider getting your own personal pots for yourself and utilizing them. I think that you'll find that these river systems around here provide a lot of great access for people who would like to recreationally crab. Hey, let's just go check this out. We're just going out and setting your own crab pot. Now look here, everyone. I set this pot yesterday and you know you can do this for yourselves. I mean, you're allowed to have a bushel of crabs, I would say, in your possession uh, in, in a 24-hour period, one bushel, which is a lot of crabs. And you can see right here, it looks like we've probably got about 18 or so crabs. But just so that you know, this crab pot, it sets on the bottom like this right here. You notice I got a weighted bar down here. For many years, I commercially crab fish here. But you know, now I just do it recreationally. But this is the pot. This is where the crabs go in right here. There's four throats on it, and you got to have your extruder rings right here. But all this is in the DNR regs. You can learn how to do crabbing yourself this way, and if you have a boat, then most certainly this right here would be a great thing to go out and do. All right, I'm going to shake a couple of these crabs out real quick. Everybody, this is a very nice catch of blue crabs. Had the pot set overnight, come back around the next day. It looks like a crab boil is underway, but I want to share something with you. Can you tell the crabs apart, male and the female? Many people can't do it, but here it is, and this is the short order lesson. Male crab, one short spike coming up on his apron on the bottom, real small, but real straightened up. It's not broad like the female crab. Look at how big that apron is. Female crab also has the red claws, looks kind of like fingernail polish, but look how much bigger the male crab is from the female crab. Now this right here, y'all, these are two great crabs to eat, but you need to understand Georgia laws and regulations in reference to crab fishing. Go to DNR and look up Georgia regulations for saltwater fishing, and it'll tell you all about it. Maybe you'll want to come out here and try this for yourself, and I can guarantee you, you'll most certainly enjoy it. Well, as you can see, that's a nice mess of crabs right here. You don't have to set all your pots if you don't want to, but you know I can say right here, you know, we've got a nice mess of crabs, plenty enough for a crab bowl. You'll you'll want to come try to check this out for yourself. But also, y'all, I know there's many things that go on down here, and you don't know how to get them done. Anytime, feel free to call me. You can come by the office there at Morningstar Marina. We have the charter fishing office there. 
uh, Golden House Charter Fishing Association. But look, if you got kids and you have access to a boat, these pots make a great option. So try it out for yourself. Enjoy the Golden Isles. I'm Captain Mark Noble.